Before I begin, I want to welcome the family, friends, and guests. Thank you for showing up. If you'd like to uh, video from up front, that is acceptable as well, so you can get the face in the shot rather than the back of the head. Totally up to your call. You can feel free. separation policy and restrictions on personal conduct in the armed forces. Yes, sir. You have been briefed on UCMJ Article 83, fraudulent enlistment. Yes, 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 sir. Article 85, desertion. Yes, yes, sir. And Article 86, absence without leave or unauthorized absence. Yes, 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 sir. Does anybody have any questions or any reservations about enlisting in the military at this time? No, no sir. All right, during the oath, you're going to have some options. At the beginning of the oath, I'm going to say the phrase, do solemnly swear. You can respond with do solemnly swear or with do solemnly affirm. Uh, that is acceptable. The end of the oath, I'm going to say the phrase, so help me God, that is completely optional. You don't have to repeat that one at all, and the oath is still valid. Everybody okay with that? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right, let me be the first to welcome you to the United States military. Thank you, sir. This is where it happens. Y'all ready? Yes, yes sir. sir. Sure? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right, you told me no after spending all day in the mess. I think you're probably a little bit touched. All right, I'm not going to stand up here and give you a long, boring, grown-out speech. I refuse to do that to you because, as I said, you've been all day in the mess, and the last thing you want to hear is me ramble on. However. I am going to give you two quotes and one piece of advice, and none of it in mind, so you can't blame me for any of it. First quote is by General George Patton. In 1942, General Patton was quoted as saying that courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is doing what you believe to be right, even when you're afraid. I've got 17 people in this room, scratch that, 13 people, 14 people in this room, and I'm fairly confident that there are that many heartbeats pounding just a little bit louder and faster than they were 10 minutes ago. If they weren't, I think something went a little bit wrong with you there, too. But courage is why you're standing here. Patton's definition of courage applies. You're doing something you believe in, and I'm fairly confident you're a little bit nervous about it. Do not ever hesitate to believe that this is a courageous act. It is. You're enlisting in the military, and you all know exactly what that means. So it is a decision you should be applauded for. Second quote is by a personal hero of mine. He was a Marine named Lance Corporal Edwin L. Kraft who was stationed in Quezon, 1968. In February of that year, the North Vietnamese Army launched what the Marines have called the most vicious artillery attack that they have ever endured. They were receiving one artillery shell inbound every 30 seconds, and they kept it up for 77 consecutive days. About halfway through that attack, Lance Corporal Kraft was given the opportunity to jump on board a helicopter, fly to Quezon for a couple days away from the shelling, and he said no. There was a civilian reporter on board the hel helicopter asked him why he would stay. His response was, for those who will fight for it, freedom has a flavor that the protected will never know. Very soon you're going to understand what he meant, because in less than three minutes, you are going to be crossing a line from being the protected to being the protectors of this nation. You should be extremely proud of that, because only 2% of this nation's population ever gets the honor of serving in the military. That's all branches, reserves, and national guards combined. I say you're joining an extremely elite group. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Don't care what service you're going into. Now for the advice. Again, it's not mine, so you cannot hold it against me. When I showed up to basic training, my TI told me that if I could live by five words, I would be able to accept and overcome any challenge the military offered me. For 16 years, he's been right. It works. Five words. Do it right. Don't quit. And by doing it right, I'm not talking about perfection. The military does not ask, demand, or even expect perfection from anyone. What the military asks is that every person in uniform give everything they have to the task at hand every time. If you can do that, you're doing it right. And the don't quit part, that's easy. Don't quit. I promise when you hit basic training, every one of you will eventually ask, what did I get myself into? For me, that moment came about three minutes after I stepped off the bus. It will happen. But if you resolve right now that you are not going to quit, you are going to take all the yelling, all the screaming, all the running, all the push-ups, all the sit-ups, you are going to take all of that, you're going to fight through and win, then you will succeed. You've already proven to everybody who counts that you have everything it takes to be successful in the military simply by your decision to stand in this room. Because I know what a hard decision it was to make, and I know what it takes to make that decision. So you should all be very, very proud of that as well. Does anybody have any questions before I answer this oath? No, no, sir. sir. Y'all just ready to get this done and get out of the maps? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right. Applicants, stand at attention. Raise your right hands and repeat after me. I state your full name. I, 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 I,
do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the orders, that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States, of the President of the United States. And the orders of the officers, and the orders of the officers appointed over me, appointed over me, according to regulations, according to regulations, and the uniform code, and the uniform code of military justice, of military justice. So help me God. So help me God. All right, at ease and congratulations. You are all now members of your respective services, afforded all privileges, and unfortunately for you, subject to all restrictions of that status. So nothing silly before you ship out. Let that adrenaline rush ease down a little bit, because I can see it in some of your faces. Are we going to pass out, are they? All right. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and go across the hallway and sign your contracts. Last question I have for you, and it's the most important question you were here all day, I promise you. Did everybody in this room get an opportunity to thoroughly and completely review your contracts for accuracy before they were sent to me? Yes, yes sir. Were there any mistakes on those contracts that I need to be aware of before you sign? No, no sir. If there were, please let me know before you sign. I want to get them corrected. I am not going to start out your military careers with paperwork that's in error, okay? Yes sir. yes, sir. All right. Any further questions? No, no sir. sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the United States military. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.